Welcome to the Realty Plus Real Talk series, where we talk to industry experts on their honest views and opinions and real facts and figures. I'm Sapna Srivasa, editor of Realty Plus magazine. And today we have with us veteran of the real estate sector, uh, who's been in the industry for more than 30 years now and has been advising developers, investors, occupiers, and governments on matters re related to real estate. I welcome on the show, Mr. Anuj Puri, who is the founder and group chairman, Anurag Property Consultants. Mr. Puri, a very warm welcome to you. So, Mr. Thank Puri, you very my... much, Sapna. It's a delight. It's absolutely a delight to be on your show. Uh, yes. So, you know, delighted to be here. I have my exactly. old friend, Anurag Patra. I hope he was also going to be here uh, this uh, afternoon. Uh, but it's, it's, it's nice to be interviewed by you uh, because uh, being interviewed by Anurag would have been <laughs> terrible. <laughs> So that would have been more like a grilling session rather than interview session. <laughs> so, Mr. Puri, my first question to you is, what is your observation of the current scenario? You know, we are seeing a lot of new factors coming in play, social distancing, work from home, people spending more time indoors. How these factors have changed real estate products, whether it is residential, commercial or retail, how they have changed and are these changes short term or are we going to see it in the long term as well? you've actually divided the question into residential, commercial, and retail, because you know all three are behaving very differently. Uh, so I'll, let, let me touch on the commercial uh, and then residential, and then I'll finally come on to the retail. I think what we're seeing on uh, commercial, you know, work from home is perhaps going to be here to stay. Uh, even after the pandemic, I think it'll be here uh, to stay. We're going to see many functions which have effectively worked from home may continue even after the pandemic to work from home. I don't think it can be that the full organization starts to work from home, you know, the morale, the culture, the gossip that you do uh, when you meet up in the office, the innovation that happens, you know, you do need an office environment, but there will be functions that will perhaps work three days a week uh, from, from home and, you know, they'll effectively be uh, able to do that. What we're also seeing, Sapna, is a number of other changes uh, that are happening. And I do feel is that they may be permanent uh, changes. One is uh, demand for flexible office spaces. So, you know, the co-working, uh, you know, that has improved, increased quite a bit. Uh, what we are also seeing is that a lot of the office um, occupiers are now decentralizing. You remember, Sapna, it used to be the story of centralizing everything into one head office location. They're quite okay to let it be decentralized and says, we want to be closer to the uh, residents of our employees. So they don't have to travel so long distances to come in here. And clearly that's a new trend that we are seeing uh, in the interior fit out, you know, the social distancing norms uh, to make sure that instead of, you know, 80 square feet per person, which many of the uh, IT organizations have started to put it in. You know, it's moving on to 120, 130 uh, square feet uh, you know, per, uh, per person. So clearly there is a lot more change that we're seeing on the office side, including uh, you know, the building management is getting fully automated. So when you're going in, uh, you know, this is sort of touchless uh, lifts that they're wanting to uh, bring in, you know, very different health hygiene uh, matters, uh, which are more secure, more safer on the office front. So you will see many of these will be permanent changes uh, on the flexible office, on, you know, the decentralized, on hygiene, safety, security, uh, automation of the, of the building norms. On the residential, you know, it is very, very different behavior uh, that we are seeing here. So, Sabna, if we were to do this interview, say in April, just after the lockdown, my views would have been very different. I am just surprised, pleasantly surprised, uh, with the way that the home buyer has come out into the, into the market. I mean, Bangalore for us is at 85% of its peak activity. So 85% of its pre-COVID peak activity, we are there. Bombay is between 55 to 65%. Similarly, Gurgaon, is at 65% of the pre-COVID activity. So clearly we're starting to see is that people are coming out and wanting to align themselves on different things. So first, 
uh, it is ready to move an inventory. So sometimes there, that is where they want to go. Second, they're definitely looking at some discount to come in from the developer. The expectation is between five to 20%. So the affordable it is, it is towards the lower end of that five. The luxury it is, the higher the expectation of the home buyer is on the, on, on the discount. They're wanting a little bit larger apartments. There are more younger folks who are coming in to buy. You know, it used to be large bulk, used to be 30 years to 40 years of age. And it used to be more towards the 40 year that they would be coming to buy their home. We're finding more younger guys, uh, more towards the 30 year uh, of age who are wanting to buy. Uh, they're largely salaried employees, IT, pharma, uh, government employees. A lot of them government employees, not as much business people. Uh, also, the way that they are buying, uh, it's a lot more on digital, a lot more on virtual tours. I'm not saying that the final house that they're buying, they're buying it virtually, but a lot of it. So, for example, if they want to see 10 houses, previously they would go physically see 10. Now they're doing all those 10 virtually, shortlisting three, and then physically going in and uh, seeing those three houses. You know, digital marketing has replaced uh, many of the offline uh, mediums. So it's becoming more and more. Uh, popular. So clearly, you know, we're finding a very different aspect in terms of the honor of uh, the home buyer, the process with uh, which he or she is following, and the product uh, which they are liking, which is a little larger and ready to move in inventory. I think on the on the retail side, it's uh, too early to say because you know, in many of the cities, the malls haven't yet really opened. You know, Mumbai, we open the malls tomorrow. Uh, so you know we will start to see what the what the reaction is but uh, you know wherever they have got opened up or the high street has opened up essential commodities have done exceptionally well and we do believe that it is largely going to be now an omni channel which is going to be that the physical retailers will also have a pretty large online uh, presence uh, so I, I do feel is that retail has to has to go through some evolution some churn uh, that you are going to see but that story is yet to unfold as the retail, real estate, whether it's high street or malls, start to open up. So, so those are pretty good, uh, you know, uh, observations. One, you are saying millennials have started now buying. So they have come into the market. And in commercial, we are going to see more of core and flex kind of a model. And uh, retail, yes, it is going to go through an evolution, more omni-channel, uh, you know, uh, spending. And as, you know, globally, we are seeing people are doing revenge buying now. So I think once retail, you know, malls <laughs> open up, we are going to see a lot of revenge buying happening. So, uh, you know, you mentioned about virtual tours and digital sales and you know, marketing. Is this a short-term phenomenon? Uh, once social distancing kind of is not a mandate anymore, are we still going to see these digital transactions happening or how is it going to be? Uh, so something very, very interesting question. A lot of people ask me uh, about this. So, you know, I, I, I do want to clarify that we haven't seen many end-to-end -end transactions on digital happen. So it's, in my opinion, a bit of a myth that the entire thing happens end-to-end. -end. These sourcing is a lot more on digital and that's because you know many places newspapers aren't being circulated really holdings aren't there as much so you know as a result of which the offline isn't isn't out there as yet uh, so that's where the digital is working in there and then we are finding that the virtual tours are are absolutely uh, being lapped by the home buyer but after they have shortlisted at the, at the virtual tour. So for example, I said is, you know, if they had 10 apartments that they wanted to go and see, uh, they would have shortlisted three it, through that virtual tour. They'll see all the 10 virtual have three, but those three, Sapna, they're definitely wanting to do physically. You know, it is in my opinion, a myth that they will do the full transaction right from sourcing to viewing the apartment to actually, you know, booking it full online. Yes, they may do, but that will be only for very credible developers, largely at a launch stage, who are willing to provide a very attractive uh, payment plan. So that is where it is going to happen. But otherwise, even in the US, even in Europe, even more mature markets, the last leg of it, 
you know, the person really wants to come and have a look at it. Have a look at it. You're sitting in a beautiful house. We can see at the, the background. You're not going to go out and buy a house without really going physically and, and looking at it. I mean, for most of us, it is almost our lifetime savings. Why would I not want to do one physical uh, visit? Yes, if it's a launch of a very credible developer and have to pay a small, small amount of money and then the rest of it, I'm going to get a payment uh, plan and I'm staying you know, outside the city where launch has taken place or where the property is, I may still be willing uh, to do it. But otherwise, yes, digital is going to be remain here, but that's largely going to be on the sourcing. I think the closing you will find will be largely physical. Uh, where people would want to inspect uh, the place that they are buying, touch and feel uh, before they actually do the transaction. So like you mentioned earlier, people used to go and visit 10 sites. Now they are doing it virtually. So once the social distancing is over, we are out of COVID, are they going to again go back to visiting 10 sites or now they are going to do virtually? Um, so, so, so I think it is very efficient, the way that uh, the system has uh, evolved. I mean, look at it. You know, we used to do this more, you know, let's meet up and let's do this interview. Uh, and, and now today we're doing it virtually and it is as effective uh, and then products a lot more productive. So I dare say that they are going to go into physically going and doing the 10 inspections again. I think they will continue to do that even after you get a vaccine uh, for the pandemic. I think it is here to stay. So some of these habits are going to be here to stay. Some of it will change and we will go back. But one of them on the virtual site visit, I believe is here to stay to at least shortlist the apartment. The final physical one, even during the pandemic, they want to come and see physical. That also they don't want to do it virtually. Okay. So this is one of the changes or the developments that is going to stay with us going forward. In terms of other aspects of building and construction, whether it is you know construction, operations, building management, facility management. How do you see the role of technology going forward? Um, so sometimes we've done a joint venture with a company called as Maze. Uh, they are the largest uh, development managers based out of the UK. And the reason that we did it and we did it in this pandemic was uh, because of the technology. We just believe uh, that in India, we are lacking behind on construction technology. So, you know, you're going to start to see a lot more construction technology come into India. You know, whether this is 3D printing that is going to happen, whether these are through drones that you're going to be able to uh, develop, uh, whether, uh, you know, this is ability to bring in technology to cut down the time, to cut down the cost, and to bring in overall efficiency of productivity. You're going to start to uh, see this. Uh, you know, previously we largely depended on very large labor force uh, to come in. I think these times, you know, most of the developers have really understood uh, that large labor force may not be the best uh, thing to have. And hence, we will need to invest in technology to make sure that we are adhering to these strict timelines that we have given under RERA and promised to the customer. Uh, you know, because the margins aren't there that much, Let's make sure that, you know, it is within that cost and hence technology will be able to help us deliver it within that uh, cost and there are no time delays on, on, on to it. And the quality that you're able to really monitor uh, through technology is going to be of utmost importance. So I do see this another evolution uh, where, you know, had the pandemic not happened, I don't think we would have moved it that fast mm -hmm. to bring in technology on construction because of this pandemic. This is one habit that will remain here where you will see more western type technologies uh, being brought into construction of the buildings. But how much penetration do you see? Is it only the large groups or the large reality firms or developers who will be adopting these new technologies? What about the mid-size or the smaller developers? Because again, cost becomes a big factor for them. So supply usually starts from the top. Uh, and you know, once that becomes commoditized, then you would start to see the mid and the smaller developers do it. You know, because it will start from the top to begin with, it's more expensive. And then once the volume starts to come in, then, you know, it gets commoditized and hence the cost comes down and ability then for a large uh, subset 
to implement technology during construction is going to happen. So it is true that at the beginning, it will products start with the larger ones. You know, they'll, they'll also get into artificial intelligence on creating uh, efficient buildings in there. Now, it'll, they have to start from the top other developer who are doing tens of hundreds of millions of of uh, development at this moment in time. But soon you will see it's like a pyramid uh, that it will start to percolate down. The ability for the technology then to percolate down at more uh, reasonable rates uh, is pretty much there. But the start has already happened. And as you mentioned, you have also started with this new platform maze. So we are hoping that, you know, we we'll start uh, seeing these uh, speed and uh, efficiency, cost efficiency coming in. Uh, another, uh, you know, my next question is, what is your suggestion to developers? Because we have seen mostly developers portfolio, large chunk is residential, then some with retail and commercial and probably hospitality. What are the new assets that you suggest to developers that they should, you know, now can have it as part of the portfolios? Um, uh I would say is uh, I'm just enamored by industrial uh, warehousing and data centers. I just think you know, that's big. It's really exploding at this morning. You know, the warehousing because e-commerce companies are doing very well. As I said that many of the physical retail will, will require large warehouses uh, that are going to be uh, set up. What we are also apart from the warehousing demand is new demand that is coming in on US or Western corporates who were outsourcing into China. They're relocating out of China, but you know the third, fourth factory that they were going to put in China, they're not putting in China. They're saying, let's come and investigate India. Not yet starting to put in the money to India, but India has gone on to their and so they're looking at India, they're looking at Vietnam, they're looking at Indonesia, they're looking at what are the government policies, what's the labor, how does the cost uh, really uh, fit into this entire thing is. So first is the warehousing. Second is this industrial, which I believe is uh, that it is, we will benefit because of the, uh, the outrage that the world has against China at this moment in time. You know, India is likely to, to benefit. Uh, if the American companies continue to look at developing or, or installing factories outside uh, China, India is likely to be a big beneficiary. The third one that has come up is this data centers. I mean, in the last, I would say, eight, nine months, just exploded that uh, data center piece where we are we're now, after China, the largest user of internet population in the world. Uh, as a result of which, number of service providers are looking at very large data centers to be put into India. And your data center uh, sometimes quite expensive. It's not, you know, that uh, that economical, I think it's called sort of megawatt, one mega, megawatt is, uh, you know, equal, I think about $10 million. Uh, and so, you know, if you're putting 500 uh, uh, megawatt, you know, it's a lot of money. Uh, that is uh, that is uh, required. So warehousing, industrial, uh, data center, and the second category I would say is the co-living, the co-working. Uh, I am a big supporter of the co-working, which I touched earlier, and I think is there is going to be more requirement of flexible office spaces. Likewise, that you're going to see is co-living uh, uh, becoming a large part of it because you know people are wanting more safer, secure, no. Uh, environment rather than you know living uh, with people that they don't know in a chamari accommodation which may be insecure or unhygienic uh, and you know their parents their kid who's working they secure or a hygienic uh, industry warehousing flex offices and the poor living I think we had a little glitch. So, um, Mr. Puri, you mentioned about a lot of these asset classes that developers can look at, but what kind of support can government give on, on these assets that you just mentioned? Because there are a lot of regulatory uh, you know, uh, uh, guidelines that are still uh, very ambiguous on these uh, new asset classes. 
Uh, so I, I'm saying is that uh, let me divide into this. Uh, this bucket is really on what can the government do on the industrial and the data uh, center. I, I think their uh, supply is more to do with the land loss. It is more to do with the labor loss. It is more to do with the fiscal and financial incentives uh, that you need to provide because all these uh, corporates who are looking to do manufacturing outsourcing, really looking at what is it you are going to provide vis-a-vis -a, -vis a Vietnam, vis-a-vis -vis an Indonesian government. So, so it is more to do with uh, their land laws for them to be able to buy land, easier labor laws, um, easier uh, ability to understand what financial incentive that a state government provides if these guys were to come in and set up a large manufacturing uh, fleet. So I would say is in the first uh, category, it is going to more to with, you know, the incentive to come into India. And it's uh, like a red carpet welcome uh, to, those, uh, to those guys. I think on the second one, uh, supply the whole uh, that you're absolutely right is that uh, uh, under law, uh, for the coal. So I do feel is that coal living should really become a category, just like you have. Co-living will really the laws that govern. Does the law for uh, govern co-living? Uh, co-living. So what is it that will really need to be need to be done? And the third, really, the government will have to handhold at this point in time the developers, uh, certainly for the moratorium period. Uh, you know, it is uh, at this point in time the ability of uh, many of the developers to pay. Um, uh, their debts, debts on a regular basis is just not going to be uh, there. So, you know, we are hopeful uh, there will be either extension of the moratorium period or a uh, request by the community stakeholders to do a time uh, is going to be there for this segment. Okay, great. So, little support from government and I think, you know, the real estate community and government working together, we can really make it like India shining. So, that's true. On the parting note, what is your top advice for those who are looking at buying or investing real estate? What would be your top recommendation? So, something I would say is uh, at this moment in time, uh, the developers are being flexible on the pricing and on the payment scheme. Um, you know, I, I think that flexibility somehow will soon disappear. You know, if, if there was a vaccine that was going to come in, you know, near the festival time, I do feel it, you will see that flexibility, you know, go down and down and down uh, in, the, in the purview or in uh, the developer's mind. So I would say to really a home buyer that if you had shortlisted something, uh, earlier and you had negotiated and hey, the same thing is coming at more economical price, go ahead and do it. Uh, because tomorrow, you know, if a vaccine was to come in uh, or if the tempo of the positivity was to really pick up, you know, you want to see that flexibility very quickly uh, from the developer's mind, both in terms of pricing and in terms of the payment plan. So really from an user uh, I would is you know please do your acquisition uh, for uh, you know office in assets uh, that, that's what I would uh, say uh, I'm not it is about the investors as I think it is largely on the office or then um, you know this new instrument that has come in called as it uh, that is where I would give uh, the investors have a more look at those two asset classes and I'm, I'm sure the icing on the cake is the interest uh, rates that now are there at their all-time low so you know yes, <laughs> so this is a great situation yeah. for everyone <laughs> so thank you mr puri for sharing your views i think uh, our viewers would be really you know happy to you know uh, 
take advantage of what suggestions that you have made here. And we thank you again for the time that you have shared with us. Thank you, Mr. Puri. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Sapna. Thanks for being on your show. Bye-bye.